Don Taylor, as you can see, classical music, the first jet. That's what we have for you today. Our original idea was to do music as a subculture of the arts, but decided that it was too broad to cover in 10 minutes. So we decided to enter the debate, classical or jazz? In the music community, there is some stir up over which genre is better, Miles Davis or Mozart? Symphonic melody or upbeat big band swing music? You be the judge. Music can be traced as far back as medieval times. From 1150 all the way to the 1920s, we have seen different eras of music. The Renaissance, Classical, Baroque, Romantic, Pre-Romantic, and Post-War eras all brought in new waves of musical styles. Each style was for a certain time period and each composer was an innovator. Classical music is very structured and symphonic. Every instrument has to be has to work in unison, and it's like the communist of music. <clears throat> However, for every Mozart, there's Miles Davis. For every Be Beethoven, there's Billy Holiday. Each perfected their craft. Jazz is more upbeat and energetic, and can be traced back to the 1700s. African Americans have a strong influence on jazz music, and, and slaves laid the foundation. They took spirituals and added some instruments to it. It's made for people to dance or enjoy a cigar with a glass of Johnny Walker. Again, you be the judge. But how does this tie in with society? Music is a very important aspect to people from all walks of life. From Irish drinking songs to those spirituals, each group of people all have traditions that we have passed down from generation to generation. For those reasons, we have decided to cover how classical and jazz music tie in with these agents of socialization. So classical music from a social class point of view is seen to be reserved for the higher class citizens. Um, it's something they're more into and they make part of their life. And it's made, um, classical music is seen as expensive. So you're gonna see classical music in things like really big expensive weddings at the Waldorf Astoria in New York, or they're gonna have harp players play at their cocktail parties in their big mansions and Often classical music is played in fancy restaurants you go to. Um, they make it a part of expensive gatherings and outings, so it's associated with the higher class. Um, in contrast, jazz music is seen for something reserved for the lower class. It was created by the minorities, and minorities use it um, to express their simple um, lifestyle and their drifter way of life. So when it comes to the high class people, they are going to teach their kids to learn instruments at a young age. So probably they have to learn their violin and they have to learn how to play piano. And those kids are going to go to private schools or Catholic schools or other church schools of that type. They're also probably going to be in the Ivy League road, like you have to go to a private school, and then so you can go and get into Harvard, things like that. Uh, private schools are also good places where they can get into things like orchestra and marching band, uh, sometimes symphony. Uh, if the kid isn't particularly good at instruments and they still want the classical music lifestyle for them, they might be into things like chorale or theater or choir. But they're definitely going to be encouraged to do things like talent shows and competitions like the Solon Ensemble, where they get graded on their technique and skill. Um, um, comparing them to their peers, they probably won't be very social beings because they are going to have a very disciplined, straightforward. Um, schedule. They're going to be busy. They're going to have lots of things to do, and they're not going to want to goof off because they're probably going to get in trouble for not practicing their violin enough. Um, so they're either going to be quiet or they're going to be really arrogant. Um, I've seen like the higher class type of people think they're smarter or better than everybody because, you know, classical music is better, it's smarter. Um, they're, um, so their discipline is going to put them off from big social gatherings like parties or sports, and they will probably have their own niche in their school.
Students intend to be considered for the upper class. Typically, families who listen to classical music are wealthy. They can afford to go to symphonies and orchestras and are able to send their children to the best schools, where classical music is highly favored. Coincidentally, those aspects tie, into, tie in with friends. People typically tend to befriend others with similar interests or common interests. If your friends listen to classical music, there is a greater chance that you will share the same taste as well. A lot of families carry on traditions, which could include where one may attend school and the activities they may partake in. Growing up, many kids do not have an option or say so. They more often tend to follow suit and do as told. This could very well influence one's preference of either jazz or classical music. If family does not weigh heavily on one's interests, it's safe to say friends always will. Why? Because when you're not going to spend any time with friends, you're with them. Then the people you tend to spend the most time with or enjoy being around tend to rub off on you if you do not already share the same interests. Okay, so as we all know, there are three different elements of culture. Material, cognitive, and normative. And material, in the material um, element of culture surrounding jazz and classical, there are three different areas. The clothing, the instruments, and the venues. For classical and jazz, typically the performers wear the same attire and sometimes offset from the conductor. But in classical music, um, it's usually more formal. And in jazz music, it is historically formal, but modernly, nowadays, it's more semi-formal or casual. And it definitely depends on the venue and the performers. So the audience with classical music, even today, is typically anywhere from a formal to semi-formal attire. And with jazz, it's typically semi-formal to formal attire. However, as before, it depends on the venue and performers. The instruments in classical music is typically string instruments like violins and cellos, woodwind instruments like flutes, clarinets, and oboes, brass instruments like trumpets and French horns, percussion such as a timpani, and pianos and organs are also frequently used in classical music. For jazz, there's string instruments like guitars and banjos, woodwind instruments like saxophones, brass instruments like trum trumpets and trombones, percussion instruments like drums and bongos, and pianos are also frequently used. The interior design of venues ranges. Um, typically for classical music, you have your typical theater style uh, venue. And with jazz, it can be a classical concert style venue, or sometimes it's also a jazz club type venue where it would be like a, with a bar and a dance floor and a stage. Um, however, in the concert type venue, the ceilings are typically come over top of the band and out to the audience um, in a slanted kind of like the band would be here and it's like a slanted ceiling so that the um, music is projected out to the audience in a to make the sound clear, but also more rounded, and so you can hear all the instruments. And there's no um, holes. With the cognitive element of culture, there's definitely a language. Music is a universal language, and knowing how to read and write music not only helps performers to coordinate together, but it also makes it to where music can be written down and passed on to other bands to play. In the normative area of culture, there are norms, um, especially regarding concert etiquette. So during a classical or jazz concert, people are supposed to be quiet and only leave the venue for emergencies. Um, but with jazz, sometimes in the jazz club type setting, it's much more laid back. Sometimes there's even a tip jar and people are definitely allowed to let the band know when they like what they hear, or they can dance, and all sorts of things. For sanctions in a concert style, there's definitely 
sanctions where patrons who disturb others during the concert, they will um, get judged by those around them with like dirty looks or that sort of thing. But also, if they're too rowdy, can get escorted out of the venue. With jazz club type attire, it is more acceptable to be a little bit more wild, a little bit crazy, but also being too much can get you escorted out. With classical or jazz subculture, mate selection is not exactly that big a deal. Um, it's more of a common interest that a person may find in another one to make it where they can do classical or jazz things together, but it's not like they have to choose a mate from within that subculture. Race and gender. Classical music is historically a white male dominated culture. And jazz music was historically a black male dominated culture. However, there was an exception with a few famous female singers. However, in today's society, there are really no longer strict guidelines on race and gender with classical or jazz music.